Today is the memorial of Saint Irenaeus, a saint Pope Francis declared the 37th doctor of the church in January of this year. In the first reading from 2 Timothy, we read, Beloved, pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord with purity of heart. Avoid foolish and ignorant debates, for you know that they breed quarrels. What to make of this reading in the last week of January 2022? I'm reflecting on this text as I listen to the Select Committee's investigation of the January 6th insurrection and absorb the past week's Supreme Court decisions. These events and the ongoing debates have captured the attention of those of us in Washington, D.C., and people around the country and the world. How do we apply the advice of 2 Timothy? Avoid foolish and ignorant debates and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. I'm not sure any of us can avoid debates, nor is silence advisable. The Greek philosopher Socrates, we are told by his student Plato, believed that discussion and debate is a means for discovering truth. However, a question for us today, do my attempts to engage in political debate promote righteousness and peace, or breed quarrels. For some, partisan politics are becoming a matter of faith in the most shallow sense of the word, an unquestioning belief in something without evidence or even contrary to evidence. I would contend that a shallow and irrational Christian faith may have primed the mind for such an uncritical acceptance of political myth and divisive rhetoric. Now, to be clear, I am not speaking of one side, but of all of us. Throughout my own voting age years, I have observed people putting faith in political leaders and ideologies at the expense of honest debate, serious reporting, and the integrity of our institutions. And I confess to Almighty God and to you that I too have sinned in this regard. Now, in the early church, there were differing and disputing positions on the life and teachings of Jesus. Saint Irenaeus, whose memorial we celebrate today, is recognized for his critique of the heresy of Gnosticism. Outside of strict Catholic theology, some modern scholars of religion dispute even naming these texts as heresy, viewing such naming as a political power play by the church to silence many of the divergent perspectives in early Christianity. It is very interesting and important to historical study to read sources that were censored and buried and I do not want to discourage anyone from reading these additional sources. However, for today's memorial of St. Irenaeus, I would like to focus for a moment on Irenaeus as a defender of orthodoxy in respect to correct knowledge. Can some knowledge be right, correct, and true, or are there many truths? Is intuition a reliable guide? While I personally favor the pluralist approach, valuing the many and sometimes conflicting worldviews of religious people around the globe, we as Catholics also believe that there is truth and right knowledge in our Christian tradition. The key insight I'd like to explore further is that correct insight for Christians is not only found in what we think and believe. In his two-volume Christology, Jesus the Liberator, the Jesuit theologian John Sobrino distinguished between three categories of correct belief, orthodoxy, orthopathy, and orthopraxis. As 
Catholics, we maintain that there is right knowledge, orthodoxy, and that the church teaches matters that are true and good. To those who would rather trust their gut, intuition, feelings, Father Sabrino also suggests that the Gospels offer guidance on a right and moral way of feeling about matters. Consider the story of the Good Samaritan. When he encounters the man who has been robbed, the Samaritan does not apply philosophical, ethical analysis, but rather he feels compassion and responds with care. At the conclusion of the parable, Jesus asks, which of these do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. For Christian morality, the head and the heart must work in tandem. Choosing to ignore facts and evidence is not pious faith, it's foolish and ignorant debates. On the other hand, Jesus' teachings are more than moral philosophy. We are in fact advised on the correct and holy way to feel about others. The psalmist today prays, the mouth of the just person tells of wisdom and his tongue utters what is right. The law of his God is in his heart and his steps do not falter. As we pursue truth of mind and heart, let me suggest the final line from 2 Timothy as a prayer for ourselves and our neighbors. It may be that God will grant them repentance that leads to knowledge of the truth, and that they may return to their senses out of the devil's snare, where they are entrapped by him for his will. All of us can pray and meditate on repentance that leads to knowledge of the truth. While the truth is sometimes difficult to discern and requires reasonable debate and dialogue, it is a path toward unity. Our reading from John's Gospel today proclaims, Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Holy Father, I pray not only for these, but also for those who who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one. We cannot hope to settle all disputes around truth, religion, law, and politics in one sitting, or even in one lifetime, as the philosophers of the ages have demonstrated. But Christ and the saints like Irenaeus offer us a model to follow. We can strive for truth through peace by rejecting foolish and ignorant debates. We can keep the law of God in our hearts, and we can choose to act with mercy.